Welcome back to the Data Science with MATLAB video series. In this video, we'll work on visualizing the data, which is a really fun and important aspect of data science. So we've been working so far with a lot of pre-processing and um, dealing with all the different types of data that we have. We also have different ways to explore and visualize this data based on the types. Um, so, for example, we've seen a lot of line plots so far. You know, we were looking at uh, temperature variations and uh, damage costs. But let's actually look at some other um, visualizations that are really great for data science applications. One thing which is nice, if you double click on your variable and select the data that you're interested in, you can actually take a look at the plot tab and see what plots are available to you. And so this is a great way to explore if you don't even know where to start with visualization. Just go ahead and select one and see what happens. So in our live script, um, we want to look at uh, the storm events and um, based on location and the damage costs. So uh, we want the frequency, the damage costs, and looking at those by the event and the location. We also want to explore different connections between the events and the locations, and then look at that free text description of uh, the narratives to see if we have any patterns or you know see if there's anything interesting that come out of the data uh, in that case. So uh, first, I'm going to see uh, the event frequency by location. And so um, I'm also creating a function called big figure so I can uh, increase the size of my figure since I have lots of locations and lots of um, types. And so uh, this gives us a quick indication of how many of these events, similar to our uh, histogram, but we also can see this broke down, broken down by state. And so, you know, we can see that there was more wind in California, in South Dakota, and Wyoming, uh, for example. And so this is showing our event frequency, but what we really want to look for is our uh, damage. And so I'm going to create the same plot, but also include uh, damage cost as the color variable. And I'm also going to uh, change the color so I can see it a little bit easier. Looking at this one, I can actually very, very clearly see uh, that some of the, the very expensive um, events are hurricanes, um, coastal weather, also likely related to uh, hurricanes, and um, some others. It also make, might make more sense to look at this on a map, and so it's uh, fairly easy to do that. We can use GeoBubble, um, it's a nice function for this, and uh, it'll automatically use your uh, categories as the bubbles. And so, you know, we can take a look at sort of uh, the locations of the different types of events. You know, um, perhaps we'll see that, you know, flooding is likely to happen around rivers and um, oceans. And we have, you know, certain areas that are more prone to tornadoes and uh, lightning and whatnot. And so this is a really great way to explore the locations of these events. So we also want to look at the connections between the events. And so uh, maybe some events are, uh, you know, some events and locations are very highly connected than others. And so we can look at this using a graph or digraph um, to help understand their relationships. So for example, so this is showing um, the, the red is the most highly connected and blue is least connected. So for something um, like flood, this is very highly connected to hail, uh, for example and also highly connected to wind. Also, I can explore different ways to slice and dice this visualization. So here I'm using a um, live control to select the different layout and the degree of connectivity. So uh, for example, I can just change the view a bit and that might help me you know, pick out more patterns. You know, again, using the live controls to continue to explore uh, these connections is extremely helpful in these kind of applications um, because I might be able to, you know, combine some of these in our analysis or, you know, remove some of them that are, you know, less uh, connected. So um, last but not least, we want to also look at our event descriptions. So this is our, uh, the natural free text that someone just wrote down about the um, event. And so this could be really interesting to see different patterns, um, 
you know, what events might happen more than others, you know, what types of uh, adjacent kind of events might happen. Um, and we can use a word cloud for this. All right, so, you know, quickly we can see that, you know, wind, gusts, miles per hour, damage, you know, these are the most frequent words. Um, also, you know, like I was saying about adjacent um, data, you know, we see maybe there are a lot of trees down or, you know, roads impacted. And so those are additional things that we could take into account with our uh, modeling. And so if we want to just take a look at certain events, um, we again could use our um, live control. And so I'll just select uh, certain events and just see what the descriptions of those look like. So if maybe we take a look at, you know, a different event like a wildfire, uh, we should see, you know, more um, related words to that event. Um, so, you know, again, this is another great, great way to explore your data and um, start to make more decisions about further pre-processing or further analysis and modeling steps that you might need to take. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll look at machine learning or predictive modeling.